Hey guys, it's Ari. Welcome to the channel, and today we're going to be discussing architecture portfolios. We're going to look at what is an architecture portfolio, why would you need one, and where to start. A portfolio is a document demonstrating your skills and abilities in creative thinking and problem solving. Now, what you want to show is you want to show what your best work is, what your skills and abilities are in terms of executing through models, drawings, photos, and renderings. This will help give a school or an office a better view of who you are as a person, what your skill sets are, how you may be beneficial to them, and how they can be beneficial in return. So you really don't have to show all the work you've done in school or professionally. You just need to show the amount of work that gives them the best snapshot of who you are as a designer and where you want to be down the line. So who needs an architecture portfolio? This will be anyone applying to an architecture program, whether that be high schoolers freshly graduated, or people in undergraduate looking to go to their masters, or people who have graduated from their academic careers and are looking to go into the architecture profession, or long-term professionals looking to make a change. Uh, for academics, portfolios generally are, you want to show a broad depth of skill between, you know, you can do a little bit of everything, you're a bit of a jack of all trades. That's the goal for an academic portfolio. They want to see, can you draw? Can you take photos? Can you make a model? Can you render? They sort of want to see the full picture. So for the academics, that's really what you're, you're, you're shooting for. But for professional, you can really start catering it down to what you want to do as a designer. But you, you need to always have the, the key goal in mind is, where do you want to be and how do you best show that's where you want to go? That's really, in the end, what your portfolio is doing. One of the most important things that I found when starting a portfolio is to look at other magazines, books, publication. It doesn't matter whether it's architecture or not. If you find that you like the way something gets laid out or the way they do their page numbers or table of contents or, or these other components, I think it's really important for you to start looking and analyzing to see what do you like about other people's work so you can better define what you like in your own aesthetic. So there are a couple components to a, an architecture portfolio. And later in the vid, I'm gonna get down to how to start a template. The template's gonna be one of the most important things that you do. It's gonna help you organize your content and your projects and your files. But we're gonna go through a couple of sort of basic things that your portfolio probably should have just in terms of, of getting you started and off the ground. Now, you may be asking, well, what kind of projects do I need to incorporate in my portfolio? And this really comes down to, you're going to want to show your studio work, sort of the academic work you've done, and it's generally best advised that you show work from multiple years, so that you show a progression of your skills over time. You don't have to show work from every year. Just remember, to show work from the years that you are most comfortable and excited and proud of the work that you've completed. Now, your studio work may create the bulk of your portfolio. But if you've done any competitions or are looking to do competitions, they can be very important work to incorporate in your portfolio. Competitions show that you are motivated to do design work beyond the academic setting. A lot of student architecture competitions have a monetary prize and are published if you win. One of the other categories of projects that I would include is professional projects. If you've had the pleasure or the ability to work on professional projects, it's always good to incorporate them in your portfolio, especially if you're going from your undergraduate to your master's or your master's to the profession. One of the things that I think is really important when building a portfolio is building a portfolio with a couple of personal projects. These are projects that aren't professional, they're not competition, they're not schoolwork. They're, they're really personal projects beyond architecture. This could be whether you have a love for photography or painting or graphic design or that you, you like to make movies or film. This shows and helps round you out as a person. So the rest of this video is going to be about me showing you sort of the components and things you're going to need to start building a template for an architecture portfolio. I will also go through my personal undergraduate portfolio that I submitted to graduate schools and so that you can see the sort of things that I'm talking about in an actual portfolio. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to design a 50-page portfolio. I'm just going to give you the tools and the basics to get you started on designing 
the template for this portfolio. We're going to start with the basics. This is what is known as a spread. This is dictated by the page size you select for your portfolio. Next, you will notice that the center line of the spread is what separates each page individually. Then you'll add page numbers so that you can quickly navigate through your portfolio. It doesn't matter where you put the page numbers as long as they're easy to be seen while flipping through the book. This part of the spread is known as the gutter. This is dictated by how many pages you have and how thick your paper is. Avoid printing in here since when the book is assembled, this region will be cut off. One formatting technique is adding margins. This will put a border around the area in which you can put content. Although not a required technique, it can sometimes add a more professional aesthetic. There are many ways to format the content within the pages. You can either do it vertically, horizontally, or on a grid. Make sure that you follow some sort of logic and remember the rules of 3 and 5. Odd numbers tend to be far more pleasing than evens. Now that you've built a basic template, it's time to put your content on the page. This could be drawings, photos, diagrams, models, or even renderings. This is known as full bleed. This is when your image takes up the entire page with no crop or border. Know that editing the size of this is far more interesting and more dynamic than having just entirely full bleed images. So the first component will be having a table of contents. It's a bit of a layover of the, the old print media days, of old books, but that being said, it's super helpful for anyone reviewing your portfolio to navigate through it quickly, and if you're in an interview or a conversation, they can just quickly tab to the project that they want to talk about or that you want to talk about. It's a very easy way to start a portfolio and a very good organizational method. Now that we've developed the base template, we can now talk about sort of populating it with the table of contents. There's a couple ways you can go about this. One is by doing it chronologically, and the other one's by doing it by projects. I've always found it helpful to include the page number, the project title, and what year. The next, which is pretty common in terms of what you'll have in your architecture portfolio, is your resume. It is a, a very quick snapshot of who you are. It shows your education, your skills, any awards you've gotten, um, any professional experience you have. It's pretty important. Sometimes it's a separate document in terms of it's submitted along with a portfolio and sometimes it's submitted within the portfolio. I've always thought it's, it's kind of nice to include both so that if someone's just looking at your portfolio, they don't have to go find your resume. It's, it's all in the same document. And the way the resume generally gets broken down is it shows that your education, any professional experience you have, skills, and then awards or publications. Now, when building the template for the sort of cover title page for each project, you're gonna need a few details. For my portfolio, I decided to use project numbers instead of going chronologically. So your first step would be adding a project number. The second step would be adding a title. Make sure it's in a semi-bold font that's large and easy to see. The third step would be adding any information like year the project was completed, your project role, the institution or office the project was completed at, and if it was entered in a competition, if it won any awards. The fourth step would be adding a project description that would best help explain your project and ideas. The fifth step would be adding an image or a drawing that best represents your project as a first impression. The sixth and final step is remember to label any drawings, renderings, models that you may have. This will help the reviewer understand what they're looking at. Finally, it's always a good idea to test multiple iterations of title pages. Now, they can change between projects, but make sure you keep at a relatively consistent format. So this is my undergraduate architecture portfolio. Uh, I had submitted this to Woodbury, SCAD, SciArc, and the University of Kentucky. Uh, my goal was to create a portfolio that felt like a unified book versus it feeling like a bunch of individual projects. So all my tags and frames around images are all in the same font and the same sort of uh, precision. All the title sheets follow a similar format and the um, book is also uh, arranged through colored tabs on the sides of the pages. So that helps when you're flipping through it to uh, navigate sort of on which project you are based on the tone of color. Um, these projects are different from different years, everything from professional to uh, first year work that I did in architecture school. And there are some personal projects in here and also some competitions. 
Uh, most of the projects I, I focused on sort of different scales and different uh, representation methods, sort of showing the wide breadth of uh, skill and detail that um, I did through my undergraduate. Some of it deals with personal explorations in terms of geometry and camouflage and art and collage. So that also plays into effect for some of these projects. But format-wise, everything's meant to be really consistent across the board, but uh, things alter when the projects sort of need them to based on the content I have for each project. So some are more sparse, some have a lot more white space because I wanted uh, images and content to breathe on the page, but overall the format and the, the template that I built really does sort of stay consistent throughout the book um, and is altered when needed. So when you're building your own portfolio, you can sort of, you know, hopefully see through the progression of mine that, you know, there is a format that I followed and a template that I built, but it, it alters and moves when needed. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you have any questions, let me know. So I hope you enjoyed that video and found it helpful that creating a template and sort of what components you're going to need in that template will help you at least get your portfolio started. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.